The outbreak of coronavirus has turned the whole world upside down. The outbreak prompted the president to make a pronouncement that there should be a nationwide lockdown in response to the outbreak. The lockdown did not leave out the colleges. It disrupted the programs in terms of teaching and learning. As a result, the principals of Tibet colleges decided to come up with ways and means of supporting the students who are at home. The first broadcast of the lessons happened on the 15th of April, 2020. I therefore want to request all the students, all the lecturers, to commit themselves to watching these programs because these programs are meant for them. After each and every broadcasting, the lessons are sent to the website of DHET. They are also accessible on the website of the colleges. You don't need data to access that. I therefore want to lastly urge you, our students, our lecturers, to ensure that these programs are making an impact on these students, to prepare them for the examination. There is no more time left in the year 2020. Stay home, stay safe. Hello, I'm Mrs. Fenter from Orbit Tivet College. I'm going to talk about financial management level four, and we're going to look at specifically the financial ratio analysis. Now the ratio analysis covers three topics in your syllabus. Topic one, manage finance in a small business. Subject outcome four, level, a learner outcome three, controlling your debtors and creditors. In topic three, we're going to look at interpret basic financial statements. And this subject outcome four all the learning outcomes cover these ratios. They jump around in them. And the main thing that we are going to look at is analyzing the financial strengths and weaknesses of a business and also learning about the cash flow in terms of liquidity. So all those ratios we're going to look at. Topic four, we're going to look at apply the budget function and that will be Subject outcome two, analyze the needs of a business unit and learner outcome two, um, looking at the economic viability of the specific business unit or the business at large. Right, financial ratio analysis will be a step in the accounting cycle that you have learned uh, since level two, and it will be at the end of the year, after preparing the financial statements of a business, it's not on this um, cycle I'm showing you, but you will know that it goes with the financial statements. Right, a business and a person working at a business can now ask, why should a business do these ratio analysis? Is it really necessary? You already have the financial statements, so what does the ratio analysis help? The information in the financial statements does not have as much meaning on its own than when the ratios are calculated. The owners of a business will not know how well the business is doing unless some information is compared to. The first thing you can compare it to is to one another. So you can look at the profit as a percentage of your sales. You can look at your assets to your liabilities, how the ratio is on those. You'll see when we go further. You can also compare this to the previous years, where you compare 2019 to 2018, and or to other businesses in the same field. For example, the result of checkers to the result of pick and pay. And we can only do this using the ratio analysis. You can't do that using the figures, uh, saying the one has had a profit of 50,000 and the other not, because it all depends on the figures that you have in your income statement. So these ratios will also indicate the strengths and the weaknesses of a business, which we call the feasibility of the business, and it can then 
also indicate the credit worthiness of the business and it's the same ratios the financial institutions are actually using to determine how credit worthy your business is, whether you are worthy of getting credit, whether you can pay it back and in the time slot that they determine. The ratios will also help with the decision making for the future, for example your budgeting or how you should change your way of thinking and look at a new way forward. The applications for additional funding on an overdraft or a loan will also help you if you've done the ratios because you can now see what the bank or the financial institution will think of your business and how well um, you will get those loans. Right, the ratio analysis can be divided into four main groups. First of all, we're looking at the profitability ratio and any other ratios we can calculate using the income statement figures. The profitability ratio shows how large the profit of the business is in relation to the turnover or the sales, like I said before. The second group will be the economic viability or the return on capital that the owner needs to know. It highlights the percentage profit the business earns on the capital invested in the business. The third group will be the liquidity ratios. And here we're looking at how liquid the business is or how much money the business will have on the short term. And these will then be determined how the current assets can fund the current liabilities in the business. The solvency ratio, then the, the fourth group, that you need to know about and this will be to determine how large the liabilities are in relation to the assets. You know that a business can go insolvent if the liabilities are too large. So that's what a business needs to know and needs to calculate. When we look at the formulae of these ratios, that's a very important step because you need to know the formula before you can actually do the calculation in the question. So the formulae of the ones that we've mentioned now, we will quickly run through. First of all, the profitability ratio, that will be the net profit pre-tax, but after interest, divided by your turnover. And to get it a percentage, we're going to multiply it by 100 over 1. This shows the percent return that a business is achieving from its sales. Another calculation that they've been asking quite a lot in the past few papers is the turnover performance ratio. So here the business needs to see whether the business is continuing its increase in sales from year to year or from period to period. So the formula that we are going to use is turnover for this year, less turnover for the previous year, divided by turnover for the previous year, and we multiply that by 100 over 1 to get the percent. Now, the lower this percent of the answer is, the lower the increase from year to year. So, a business can then compare it from year to year to see whether the business is continually making, a, having a larger turnover and not just looking for a higher profit. So, when you comment on these ratios, which is another part of the questions, you can say if it's a very low percent, you can comment that the expenses should now be looked at or investigated so that they can lower the expenses and some methods of increasing sales should be found. Uh, for the income statement calculations, you can also, they can also ask you to calculate any expense as a percentage of the total sales, or total expenses or as a percentage of the sales. Um, depending on what the question states. And this will then give an indication of how high the specific expense is, or if it's compared over the two years, you can see how this expense has increased. And this will help the budgeting, especially if you, they see that uh, one expense, let's like say, for example, the telephone has increased extraordinary to, um, to, in relation to the others, they realize that some of the staff is maybe using the telephone for their personal expenses, for their personal um, use, and they can then make a plan and look at this to manage the expenses to maximize their profits. Right, the economic viability or return on capital calculations. In your textbooks, we've got different formulae for the same thing. So 
we have the ROCE, return on capital employed, and that formula will then be net profit before tax, but after interest, divided by the total capital employed, total capital employed then being the equity plus the non-current liabilities. And to get the percent, we multiply that by 100, divide 1. Another calculation will then be the return on investment, or the ROI, and that will then be the investment of the owner, meaning then the net profit pre-tax of the interest divided by the equity, or the owner's equity, and then to get the percent, we multiply by 100 over 1. We also have the ROE, or return on equity, using the same figures, return on net income and return on net assets. Um, and the abbreviations you will also see there in your books. So what does it measure? It measures the profitability or earning power of a business in relation to the net equity invested in the business. And if they're asking you to comment on these results that you have found in your calculations, this is now the one that you can compare to the investment percentage that you can get at a financial institution. Let's say the investment percentage is, at this stage, about 5 to 7 percent. Now you can see if your answer was lower than this 5 to 7 percent, it will be better for the owner to stop this business completely, to take his money out and to invest it at a financial institution. He will actually get a higher return. So this will be the part where you now comment on the answers that you got. Right, if we look at the liquidity ratios, that's now to do with the cash on hand or cash available. The first one, we're going to look at the current ratio. So we're going to take the business's current assets, divide by current liabilities, and see what that answer is. It, we need to know what it measures, so it measures how well the current liabilities can be paid by the current assets. And we also need to know what the ideal situation is so that when you comment, you can see whether the business is above the ideal or below the ideal so that you can say whether the business is doing well or must have a, a change of policy and look into the matter. So the ideal for the current ratio is then two to one. Two assets to every one current liability. The asset test ratio, the next one, and here we're going to take the current assets, but we're going to take away the stock. So in case the business doesn't sell the stock, will they still be able to cover their li current liabilities? And also for businesses that do does manufacturing, we have the WIP, which is work in progress. And we're also going to subtract that from the current assets. And this will then measure how well the current liabilities can be paid by the current assets if the inventory is not sold. And the ideal situation for this is then one to one. One current asset, less the stock, to one current liability. Obviously, if the business does better than that, it is a good situation. The current um, assets are also um, influenced by how soon the debtors pay us. So the next calculation will be the debtors turnover rate, also called the accounts receivable turnover rate. And here we're going to take the credit sales and divide it by the debtors or the accounts receivable. And that will then give us how many times a year the debtors pay us. It measures how quickly your debtors pay you and it's used to measure and control your debtors. So the ideal will obviously be 12 times a year because the debtors are usually given a term of 30 days. So if your answer is less than 30 days, you need to comment that the business needs to revise the credit policy and the collection policy. The average collection period is linked then to the debtor's turnover rate because it, the answer of the one is used in the other one. And here we're going to have the formula of 365 days in the year, or 366 if we have the leap year, divided by the accounts receivable turnover rate that you've just calculated in the previous one. And this will then give you how many days the debtors take to pay you. So these two are linked, the one giving you how many times a year and the other one giving you how many days the debtors take to pay you. And because we always have the, usually have the 30 days term, we then take that as the norm or the ideal situation and look then what our answer gives us to comment on how, whether it's a good or a bad 
um, situation the business is in and whether they should revise the credit and the collection policy or not. Right, the last two liquidity ratios will then have to do with the, liab the current liabilities and that then the, how soon we pay our own creditors. Creditors turnover rate or accounts payable turnover rate. And the formula here yeah, then the credit purchases divided by the creditors, outstanding creditors, and this will then give us how many times a year. So this is similar to what we've done with the debtors. Your comment then, it measures how quickly your business pays your creditors, and it's used to measure and control your creditors. Ideal situation then 12 times a year. So the comment with this will now be a little bit different than with the debtors. If your answer now is a bit lower than your ideal, you will now comment that the business is losing money on the terms discounts because they're not paying in time and they're also paying unnecessary interest. So it's money that's lost that they could have used for something else. The average payment period then linked to this because you're going to use your previous one's answer in the calculation. Again, 365 or 366 depending on leap year or normal year, divided by your accounts payable turnover rate. And this will give you how many days we take to pay our creditors. We have to look at this case study or in the specific question, the scenario that's given, because sometimes our creditors allow us about 45 days to pay or 60 days to pay. So then that must be your um, guideline as to which norm you will then use or the ideal situation. Right, the solvency ratio is then the last set of ratios that we're looking at. The debt ratio as a percent, we're going to take the debts or the total liabilities. Remember that debts and debtors are not the same. Your debts are your liabilities and your debtors are part of your assets. So we're going to take the debts or total liabilities divided by the total assets, multiply by 100 over 1 to get our percent. So this is then used to calculate how much debt as a percent is used to finance the business's assets. The lower the percent, the better for the business because then it's a lower risk for the lender or the financial institution. Remember, these are the exact same calculations that the banks or the financial institutions will do to determine whether you as a business can get a loan or not. We can also calculate the debt ratio, the, second, the next one there, as a ratio, as this to that, how many rands of our one will go into the other. And we, there we can take the total assets divided by the total liabilities. So you can see that now this, the formula has swapped around because we're not calculating the percent. So this shows how well the business assets cover the liabilities. And the ideal ratio for this one is two to one. Two assets to every one liability that you've got. The next one, solvency ratio, is the gearing ratio. And here we are going to take the owner's equity divided by our debts or our liabilities. It indicates the current level of debt in relation to the owner's equity and also the ability of the business to manage its debt levels. The ideal for that must not be lower than one to one. Your equity must never be lower than your liabilities. Equity should not be lower than the foreign capital. That's what they usually say. The last solvency ratio is similar then to the gearing ratio, but now again the two has swapped around because now we want to calculate the percent. Debts or total liabilities divided now by your owner's equity and times 100 over 1. It measures the ability of the business to survive over many years. We're now going to... I'm now going to give you a few facts to remember when you do ratio analysis. It's not so difficult. There are four important facts to remember. First of all, know your formulae, because if you don't know the formula, you don't know which figures to use, and you cannot do these questions. And write them down, write down the formula before you actually do the calculation. So you're going to, for example, calculate the asset test ratio. So you write down current assets less the inventory divided by the current liabilities. You need to also write down the specific year. Sometimes I ask you to calculate for both years, sometimes only for one year. So if you have to calculate for two years, you can't just put any figure anywhere. The, the marker will not know which one you did first. 
So write down 2018 equals and write your formula and then you get the answer. So in my answer I've got 0 0.7821 for 2018 and 0, uh, 1.221 1 for 2019. The second fact that you need to know is know what this ideal ratio is or the norm, sometimes called the benchmark. For each formula, because you cannot um, comment and say whether the business is doing well or not if you don't know what to compare it to. So I've got the ideal situation here is one to one for my asset test ratio. And now I can comment. I can say in 2018, the business was below the ideal at 0.7821, which is bad, but the situation improved to above the ideal ratio at 1.2 2-1 in 2019, which is good for the business. If the two were swapped around and we did uh, better in the first year, we can now use the word it deteriorated in the second year because the situation of the business is now much worse. Thirdly, you need to know what each formula is testing or showing so that you can comment on that and mention this in the comment. The asset test ratio shows that the business should be able to pay their creditors on time and should not have any cash flow problems, even if they cannot sell their stock. So because you know what the ratio is testing, you can now use that in your comment. Or if it was a negative situation, you could have said the business may run into cash flow problems if the stock is not sold because now they can't pay their creditors on time. Right, the last fact that you need to remember is make sure that you use the correct year's information from the question paper. If I look at the question paper, I've got the information here of the November 2018 paper. You can see that they're giving you the figures in two different columns. So sometimes they use the oldest year first and the newest year last on the right hand side and sometimes they swap them around. So look very carefully that you're using the correct information given. If we look at question 4.4, study the following summary of the income statement for snapshot, that's now the business we're doing, and answer the questions that follow. You also need to look at how many decimals you need to show for all your answers. Sometimes I put it at the question itself and sometimes at the start of the paper. So here we have the income statement for two years and now the questions. For, for one, calculate the net profit percent for 2015. You need, you need to see which year you have to calculate it. They could have also asked all the profitability for that specific year. So we get our formula down, net profit equals net, uh, net profit percent equals net profit before tax, divided by your sales times your 100 over one. Get your figures from the income statement and then get to round it off correctly from what you see on your calculator. 4.4.2, they now give you the net profit percent for the previous year and ask you to comment on the change from year 2014 to year 2015. So yeah, you can say the net profit percentage has increased because you can see the previous year and you can see the new year and you need to mention your years as well when you put your percentages down and you use your answer, even if it may be a wrong answer, they will still give you credit for it because you have used the answer that you got in your calculation. And also, which shows that this business is doing well. The second, the next question there, 4.4.3, they ask you to calculate the turnover performance ratio for 2015. Again, you write down your formula, Turnover for this year, less turnover for the previous year, divided by turnover for the previous year, multiplied by your 100 over 1. Get the correct figures from your income statement and round off your answer correctly. The next question was 4.8. Now they're asking information from the income statement as well as the balance sheet, but they're giving all of this separately. So don't go now go back to the previous Question. Now they're giving all the information yeah, at this question that you need to know. So calculate the current ratio, comment on this one as well as the previous year, calculate the ROI and get your percent rounded off correctly. Very important for you to do the correct rounding off. Um, commenting then on your return on investment, 4.8.4. 
you can then say the business has improved from year one to year two, if you look at the percentages increased. You can also say it, what it measures, the profitability or earning power of a business in relation to the net equity invested. And you can also say it can be compared to the return that an investment will yield at a financial institution. Right, I hope that that has helped you understanding the ratio analysis. It's not so difficult, you can do it. Just remember the few points, remember your formulae, write them down, know what the ideal or the benchmark is for each one, write that down, and know what each ratio is testing. And remember to get the correct information from the question paper. Good luck with your studies. I hope you stay safe and healthy. The outbreak of coronavirus has turned the whole world upside down. The outbreak prompted the president to make a pronouncement that there should be a nationwide lockdown in response to the outbreak. The lockdown did not leave out the colleges. It disrupted the programs in terms of teaching and learning. As a result, the principals of Tibet colleges decided to come up with ways and means of supporting the students who are at home. The first broadcast of the lessons happened on the 15th of April, 2020. I therefore want to request all the students, all the lecturers, to commit themselves to watching these programs because these programs are meant for them. After each and every broadcasting, the lessons are sent to the website of DHET. They are also accessible on the website of the colleges. You don't need data to access that. I therefore want to lastly urge you, our students, our lecturers, to ensure that these programs are making an impact on these students, to prepare them for the examination. There is no more time left in the year 2020. Stay home, stay safe.